The second half of Voyage begins very sinister. This song has me always hooked from the very first note. From then on, I am completely drawn in until the very end, when I realize what an incredible piece of music I've just witnessed. I Can Be That Woman is full of pain, regret and blame, and also about hope. It's certainly one of the most serious of all ABBA songs, depicting a woman suffering with alcoholism and her relationship suffering from that. There are many more meanings and influences hidden in this track, a song that simply became just another one of those gorgeous hidden album songs by ABBA. One of our viewers called it a dark highlight of the album. It may even be the one song on Voyage that forges the most new musical crown for ABBA, and it proves how much their artistry has evolved. Let's talk about all of that and more. Let's explore I Can Be That Woman. Hey, so, I Can Be That Woman was one of the first songs to be recorded for Voyage on the 25th of January 2019, and it really is as if they literally picked up where they left. Many of you described Agneta's vocal delivery as being one of her very best ones, up there with her greatest performances from the past. SOS, My Love, My Life, Chiquitita, One of Us, and The Day Before You Came. But one song was mentioned most often, The Winner Takes It All. It's almost as if I Can Be That Woman is a follow-up of that song, just in terms of Agneta's delivery. She is at the peak of her masterful storytelling ability. The performance is raw and heart-wrenching, her voice is intense, sincere and haunting, and even darker in expression as in The Winner Takes It All. So it's more than just a coincidence that this was one of the first songs recorded for Voyage. It even continues the theme of the very first song that she sang for that album, Don't Shut Me Down that hope of trying to rebuild and retain a relationship. Agneta, I'm stunned every time, delivers a remarkable lead vocal. For me, this is one of her absolute best performances of all time. It moves from incredible nuances. She uses her matured voice from today to the greatest advantage with all its vulnerability. Her voice almost cracks when she sings, I'm sorry, I can see you've cried. Or, this is how all our fights have begun. This is how all our fights have begun. The voice is heard, we feel the pain and damage that the song is telling us about. This is not only incredibly brave to do, but it is so appropriate. And of course, she knows exactly what she's doing. She completely controls that voice. Because in other moments, she sounds eerily like the shining voice of her younger self. In those moments, we can feel that shimmer of hope of the song. It also reminded me, and many of you, of some of Agneta's own songs and albums. Her composition Man from 1983 is about that realization of one's relationship and love to one another. Deep inside, I really know, I love you, I do. In one line, she even sings the word somehow in a similar way as in I Can Be That Woman. I can also feel the mood of her great ballads from I Stand Alone, for example, Maybe It Was Magic. And some of you even connected I Can Be That Woman to Agneta's most recent album, A, from 2013. Listen to I Was A Flower, which is not quite as dark, but similar in mood. On her very own composition from that album, I Keep Them On The Floor Beside My Bed, Agneta's voice also cracks every now and then in crucial moments as part of her storytelling. Equally impressive and very meaningful to give I Can Be That Woman its ultimate feeling of hope is the vocal delivery of Frida during the chorus. She adds complementary harmonies so Agneta and Frida don't really sing together, they sing more like past each other. They complement each other's lines, which is so important for the ongoing movement of the song. Frida basically anticipates the lines that Agneta sings next. This vocal contrast somehow echoes the inner state of the woman in the song. This technique is also what makes the two choruses different to each other and increases that feeling of hope. In the first chorus, Frida first appears after the second line. In the second chorus, she is even there before the chorus starts and this time the full band kicks in. My friend Sam connected the song to another song by Abba with lead vocals by Frida as if it was a counterpart 
And he also talked about the rough edginess of I Can Be That Woman. The song feels like Agneta's version of One Man, One Woman. The scenario and the structure are basically the same. A couple fighting at home and being at their lowest point. But there's a shimmer of hope in the end. This also reflects in the very stripped-down instrumentation of both songs and in the raw but clear lead vocal performances, in this case Agneta. I Can Be That Woman is definitely the roughest song on Voyage. It almost sounds like it was recorded in one take. Sometimes you can even hear Agneta opening and closing her lips. So, in the case of Agneta's vocal performance, there is also much credit going to Benny, as one of our commentators pointed out. The vocal production here is minimal and raw. Agneta's voice in the verse is front and center with minimal reverb, like she's singing it at you, not just to you. And there are so many little vocal mistakes that Benny could have easily punched out, but it was such an artistic statement to leave them in as is, in its raw form, which again adds to the overall raw edginess of the song. I Can Be That Woman is full of gorgeous melodies by Benny, who is all over this song, with details and moments that really complement Agneta's delivery, piano interjections on some of her lines, or a swelling orchestra in dramatic moments. When it comes to the music, Sam mentioned how minimalistic it is, and that's how it seems to be, but if we take a look at all the instruments involved, this is quite elaborate. We have Benny on keyboards, but we also have drums, two guitars, and for the first and only time on this album, some genuine bass playing. On the rest of Voyage, the bass is usually played by Benny on synthesizer. We also have another incredible contribution by the Stockholm Concert Orchestra, delivering that gorgeous string arrangement, which was conducted by Benny's longtime collaborator, Joran Arnberg. Now, with all these many layers and instruments, they still manage to let it all sound so simple and sparse in the final mix. This kind of stripped-back arrangement reminded me of little things and it really made me realize on my first listening of the album what I am actually experiencing and listening to. Compositions from Benny, written for Agneta and Frida, performed by the ladies and completed by lyrics from Björn. It's ABBA in its purest form. And Björn's lyrics are another ingredient of the song that shows how much their artistry has progressed. It seems as if Björn put everything into this writing. Like in One Man, One Woman, there is so much story in it, but this time Björn's lyrics are not only unusually straightforward and very plain, but he is able to express so much with just a few words. The sudden, abrupt, punctuated, monosyllabic words like sick, trunk, and the emphatic screw you are these little barbs that poke out at you, leaving little scars. And already in this brief opening line of the song, we get no less than three situations, each of them with just three syllables. You're asleep on the couch with Tammy. We know what the woman is doing. She's watching someone, her husband, as we later learn. And we know what that someone is doing. He's asleep. We know where they are and we know who is with them. Tammy, as we later learn, their dog. Björn paints these pictures in our minds with just a few simple words and he sets the mood for the rest of the song. The next line completely shifts focus onto one situation only, the dog looking up at her. Björn continues throughout the song to give way to this important relationship between human and dog. The dog jerks every time you swear. The dog is the first to feel it. Björn will return to the importance of animals on the song Bumblebee which actually happens to have been recorded on the very same day. In I Can Be That Woman, Björn gives us this incredible empathy and understanding of an animal's feelings. In turn, it also gives us the entire emotional complexity of the relationship between husband and wife. Hidden within those lyrics, it even indicates some form of domestic violence. Now, the raw edginess of the song in Agneta's vocals, in Björn's lyrics, the minimalistic instrumentation and the themes of domestic abuse, alcoholism, a dysfunctional relationship and a loyal dog. Where does this come from? I said that this song reminded me of ABBA in its purest form. One of the biggest reasons for this may be that, as so often, they take an entire genre, add it into their sound and make it their very own. Björn and Benny said that I Can Be That Woman is basically a country song in content and style. Many of you gave tremendous feedback about that in fact, to many other aspects I built into this video as well. And also references to country artists whose music reminds them of ABBA's I Can Be That Woman. According to dictionary.com, 
The genre of country music is defined as a style and genre of largely string accompanied music, generally simple in form and harmony, and typified by romantic or melancholy ballads. Musically, it is often defined by a consistent, measured tempo, ascending and descending melodies that are fairly straightforward, piano trills and country-style picking guitars. The lyrics in country songs are usually simple and direct, often about painful topics that deal with heartache and regret, with relationship strife and arguments, themes of alcoholism, domestic abuse and, indeed, dogs as well. Above all, one recurring theme in country is that shimmer of hope. And one artist was actually mentioned by Björn as the immediate connection to this song, Tammy Wynette. The dog's name Tammy is the obvious reference. But Wynette was in fact in a difficult relationship at one point, which suffered from her partner's alcoholism. Wynette also happened to have died at the age of 55 while sleeping on her couch. One of you mentioned one specific song of hers, which may have been the influence for Abba's I Can Be That Woman. It is considered to be her signature song and it is called Stand By Your Man. It deals with a woman's attempt to overlook their husband's faults if she truly loves him. Some of the lyrics are, you'll have bad times and you'll have good times, but if you love him, you'll forgive him. These themes also reminded me of another song on Voyage, no doubt about it. All couples we know are able to compromise. I could make amends and there's no doubt about it. Again, it's about that hope and ambition of trying to save a relationship. But overall, as someone pointed out, I Can Be That Woman may be based on country style, but is a fusion of that genre in the usual ABBA creative fashion. And for I Can Be That Woman, I can't help but think that Björn was perhaps even influenced by more personal matters. In that case, the tragic story of the late Josephine Nilsson. She was a Swedish artist with whom Björn and Benny worked together, especially in 1993 when they wrote and produced an album called Shapes. This was basically the final entire pop album from Björn and Benny until Voyage. Benny also worked together with Josephine Nilsson in 2015. One year later, she unexpectedly died at the age of 46. In a documentary from 2019, it was revealed that she suffered from the violence from her former partner which revived an entire discussion about domestic violence in Sweden. Again, I'm not saying that this is what I Can Be That Woman is about, but that's what I was reminded of, and perhaps it was one of several influences for the lyrical content. Coincidentally or not, some of you actually mentioned two songs from Josephine Nilsson's Shapes, which reminded them of I Can Be That Woman. A troubling and intense subject matter occurs in the excellent and atmospheric song Where the Whales Have Ceased to Sing, and the musical motif at the end of each phrase in I Can Be That Woman also occurs on Josephine Nielsen's song When I Watch You In Your Sleep, which also happens to have a similar chord progression. Do yourself a favor and listen to those two songs, in fact, to the entire album, and read the lyrics, which are masterful craft by Björn. When I first heard I Can Be That Woman, I really thought that this song would have fit very well to be performed by Josephine Nielsen as well. In any way, the somberness of I Can Be That Woman opens side B of Voyage, and it very much gives a taste for things to come on that second half. It is as dark and serious as it can get. It's remarkable how they put all of these songs together and don't shy away from serious issues. But darkness has always been an important part of ABBA's legacy. At the same time, their melancholia is contrasted with upbeat spirits. It's contrasted in the structure of the album itself. The first half of Voyage is much more joyful. It also opens with a ballad, this time sang by Frida, but is much more hopeful and celebratory. And it is contrasted in the songs themselves. I Can Be That Woman is somber, but it also gives hope, already in the song title itself. It gives hope in Agneta's shining voice at some points and in Frida's complimentary vocals that fly in. I Can Be That Woman is about that hope of trying to rebuild and retain a relationship. And ABBA themselves achieved exactly that. This photograph was taken on the day when they recorded that song. In a way, it's the perfect symbolization for Abba's return. It's a photo of life and survival. And I think it resonates especially because it captures them in their later years. They evolved artistically and personally as well. It shows us that after so many decades, one can still be the best of friends and that there can be a happy ending. They have a story and it survived. It's about resilience and ABBA are the ultimate survivors. 